I want to tell a story. This is my nephew. About two months ago, he just, uh, his wife is married for about eight months. His wife is, was pregnant. Uh, he had some dizziness. He felt some dizziness. Uh, he felt some heaviness in his head, so he went to a private doctor and he prescribed him some drugs. After two days, to th three days, he started to have a ration. Then he, he went back to again to the same doctor and he looked at him and he said, maybe this an allergy from some kind of food. You wait to eat a lot of fish and drink a lot of buttermilk, so you must have it. So he gave him extra medicine. After another three days, his wife started crying because the ration went all of his body and he don't know what's the problem. And she was pregnant and she was afraid that it might affect her and she's newly weak. So she went to another private hospital because private hospital is better than public. This is unfortunately our attitude. He went to another doctor. The doctor looked at him and he said, hmm, maybe there's some bugs or fleas in your bed. Come on. So he gave him extra medicine and tell him, please continue to have the same medicine with the extra medicine. Then he said, hey, let me go to a private, to, let me go to a government hospital. So he went to a government hospital. The government hospital, he looked at him and he said, no, you need a cortisone. So he gave him a cortisone. He said, I don't know, because he checked all his blood results. There is nothing. And then the consultant came passing by and he looked at him and he said, no, I don't know really what's happening to you. I have no idea. Come after three days, things will go fine. If it didn't happen, then go to al Hamid Hospital to check. Maybe you have some kind of allergy, we don't know. So he went, after three days, he went back to... So there's a missing link. Actually, there's a missing physician. They don't know what's going on. He went to two private hospitals and one government hospital, and unfortunately, they don't know. So he went to al Hamid Hospital. The doctor start looking at him and while he was talking he said less than a minute and she said stop all your horses what she looked at the uh, the red uh, the ration and say oh you have what's called ADRS so unfortunately as I said three doctors four doctors they don't know a specialist there is so there is a missing link what's the problem so I went to research and look at ADRS, what is it? Because I don't know what is it as a public. I don't know. I'm not a physician. I'm not a healthcare worker. So I don't know. So I went and it say, my, my aim now in this presentation to raise awareness, to raise the reporting of ADRS. Why doctors, why physicians, they don't report ADRS? So what's ADRS? unwanted harm associated with the use of a given medicine at a normal dose. So it's a normal dose. So everybody, if he has some felt some disease, some health problem, he will take a normal dose. So it might be a single dose, a dose for a long time, or a combination. Mine if you had the combination, unfortunately. When I looked, it say, wow, there's some big problem here because it might add to death. Death. And they say it might be mild or severe. The doctor in Al Hamid Hospital, you see, you thank God. Does your mother li love you? He said, yes. Say thank you to her because she was praying for you. Because this medicine, if you continue for another week, you will damage your liver and kidney. For congratulations because you came to the right person. How many people of us will come to the right place? I'm talking about the public, and one, I am one of the public. We'll continue, because we have a thought. Doctors are gods. Today, uh, I, I have this week a seminar with one of the ministries about psychology and so on. So I asked the public or the audience with me, 
If you take a medicine, do you check with the pharmacist? Do you say, what's the side effect? You say, no, why? Doctor, he know everything. <laughs> so doctors being a son, I don't have to talk to pharmacists. I call a pharmacist friend. I told him, does doctor come to you? Do they talk to you about medicine? He say, no, unfortunately, because they are doctors. We are pharmacists. We are a to we help them. But we cannot decide what's good, which is vice versa. When I was in the UK, usually the pharmacists come and check the medicine and ask you what type of medicine you are taking. And he will be like a physician. And then he will decide what medicine is it right for you or not, even the quantity. And he will stay with you for at least 10 minutes. Not like a, a bossman just giving you the medicine, no. For 10 minutes, 15 minutes, he will come and this, and, and every time he come and visit the patient, he will do the same. Unfortunately, we are discovering new diseases. There are so many drugs in the market, so what? For sure, we'll have likelihood of ADRS effect. It will increase. Unfortunately, it's hidden. We cannot see it. I look at the Journal of American Medicine Association. They say approximately 1.5 million hospitalized a year was caused by adverse drugs reaction. This is in the state where pharmacists is involved in their treatment, unfortunately. So it means that every day in the, in the state, there is 4,000 patients have adverse drugs reaction. There is another journal state about 22.3 of all emergency calls can be attributed to ADRS. So we are talking about a huge number, huge patient, okay? There is another journal stated ADRS ranked among one of the highest cause of mortality in the state, which is Also, there's another research, say, a study of suggested adverse drug reactions are among the top cause of death in the USA, okay? If I have ADRS, what's the social effect with me? What will do? Like my nephew, his wife nearly say goodbye. I'm taking off my kid. His mother was crying all the day. His father, he doesn't know what to do. He said, should I take you to the, any place? Where can I take you? So there is a social effect in that. How about going, not going, for example, to work, also social effect. So we are not talking about the, unfortunately, the drug. Also there is considerable economic consideration because what? He will not go to work. He has not went to work for two weeks. Going not to go to the work, there is effect. His mother doesn't go to work, his father does not, because all they are worried about him. All this sequence things. Okay, unfortunately we have medicine policy, we have procedure, everything written and clear. But why doctors or physicians, they don't follow it? Okay, unfortunately documents are important, but what kind of communication, why? This message does not come to the physician, unfortunately. We have a lot of training. They, do, they take the doctors and do a lot of training, session, workshop, but still, there is no response in Kuwait, unfortunately. What, from my understanding, because I talked to a couple, I might be wrong, but I've talked to a couple pharmacists, that's their answer, unfortunately. So after what we are, there is some problem with the reporting culture. It's the culture. People are afraid to report. People are afraid to admit a mistake. Although we are a human being. People are afraid of the law sequences that I, they might take me to the court or somewhere else. Pharmacists here, uh, who has seen Okay. Unfortunately, there is also another study in Italy say there was 74.8 foot care professional who has seen patient experience an ADRS, only 20.1 had been reported. So it's less than, unfortunately, less than a quarter. 
Some studies in India, they made a couple of studies, and they say there is poor knowledge and attitude and deficient practice in reporting ADRS. So we are talking about behavior. There is law, there is law, there is information, there is courses, but we are talking about attitude and behavior. This is a good thing. 92 pharmacists believe reporting ADRS, <laughs> immunity health, is providing quality care of the patient. So we are talking about pharmacists, but there is a missing link between a pharmacist and the physician. And unfortunately, most of the people, as I stated, they will ask the doctor. They will not ask a pharmacist. So, doctor, they will know what's the effect of ADRS because every day we have a new medicine. Since we are taking chemicals in, in our bodies, these chemicals change. Maybe after five years, I'll find side effect. Doctors, they don't read it. Pharmacists read it. Pharmacists update their knowledge. Doctor, you know, this medicine, it will cure this medicine, unless it's a big issue and it's well known. But there are some little things coming in the uh, medical brochure that with the medicine, it will tell us about it. So actually, we have knowledge and skill. We know everything. But how is our attitude? The attitude is a big thing that will affect our decision, will affect our behavior. So actually what we want, we need to add a positive attitude. So people will go and report ADRS. There will be more knowledge about it. There is evidence that people who are more aware of their attitude, if I know my attitude is a positive attitude, then I will report it. People who doesn't have a positive, a negative attitude, they will not report it as easy as that. Therefore, we have to look at the behavior of people. Behavior of people, we have to go to our friend Freud. We have individual behavior, so every physician, every person here have a different. Maybe both of them are, let's say, brother and sister, but this like, uh, for example, coffee, this like latte, this Turkish coffee, everybody has a different taste, so everybody diff think differently, everybody have a different behavior. Personality, their mood. So if I go to a physician at 8 o'clock, it's different than I go to a physician at 1 o'clock. Or if I go to a pharmacist also, at the end of his shift, it's different than coming at early in the morning. So moods would affect person. We have to know that. We have to know that physicians are not robots, they are human beings. They have feelings. If he have a problem with his wife, then his mood will be lousy. If he's in a heavy mood today, he will give you more time. If there is no crowd in his room, he will give more time and he will listen more. Also, two people will differ differently from the same. If I look at this is ADRS, somebody else will say, no, it's a rush. So we have different views. Should I report it? Some people will report it. Other people will not report it. Therefore, we have to go to industrial psychology. Industrial psychology is the study of human behavior of individuals during practicing their work. And also we have to go to what's called environment psychology because environment psychology will talk about a study of the effects of the physical and social environment in you. If I'm in a small room and there is no AC in the summer, how's my behavior? If I'm in a relaxing room, how's my behavior? It's totally different. Unfortunately, most of the people will look at laws and application and training, but nobody looks at the individual work. Am I happy? Am I satisfied? Do you are getting my needs or not? I am not a machine, I am a human being. Number two, the components of the work environment is how is the work environment? Is it healthy, not healthy? Are you providing me with a good chair I can sit? 
and talk to the patient or a broken chair or I have to stand six hours, eight hours. You don't give me the facility of drinking a tea. And I am a human being, I need these things to sober. Organization behavior. How is the relation between physician, for example, and pharmacist? How is the relation between the pharmacist together? And the interaction between them. So mostly in the psychology point of view, we look at the uh, interaction between the individual and the work environment. Also, if we look at the organization, they, they behave differently. They don't behave simultaneously the same thing. We go to conjunctive behavior theory, theory, which say, if you want to improve the behavior to make it positive behavior, then I have to reinforce behavior, I have to reduce unwanted behavior, and I have to adopt a new behavior. Unfortunately, not all the people can adopt behavior, especially being for 20, 30, doing the same thing. For example, if, my, if I'm as, as a father and as a parent and taking some trash and throw it out of the window of my car, my son will do the same. I cannot change my behavior because I'm used to it. I've done it for a long time. Time. I am adapted to it, so I have to adapt a new behavior. If we look at the attitude, is the inner feeling, what I feel. If I say no, I am for this job, for the money, with this, right. or this job to serve people, or this job to help blah, 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 or this job to embrace the pharmacist's job. It depends what's my attitude. So like example, what's your attitude to a nuclear plant? This is what they call attitude. So we have conjective, effective, and behavior. We have to increase the positive attitude and reduce the negative attitude. The good thing is about attitude, it can be changed. I smoke cigarette, then I quit smoking cigarette. I throw garbage off the window, now I don't have to throw. I don't talk to the patient, or I don't smile to the patient, I can smile to the patient. I don't talk to the pharmacist. I can't talk to the pharmacist, because they are my right hand. That's the difference. So actually, will improve reporting adverse reaction, because I will know, yeah, this is part of the job. At least I'm a human being. I make mistake, I communicate with the pharmacist, I improve my knowledge with the pharmacist. How attitude form, change, and shape our behavior? Prediction. First, we have to know the prediction of that people. Is this person, he will do that? Is his culture, for example, somebody studying, or somebody is studying so and so years in this place, does that his attitude, his protection will do the same thing as the place he is stayed in or in the new place? In the new environment or the old environment? I have to know that person so I can change his behavior. Number two is clarification. I have to clarify things to it. I have to say ADRS is so and so. It will do so and so. I have to clarify. Even unfortunate people, they say everything they know. Yes, I know. He will never say I don't know. For example, the other doctor, he didn't call the consultant and ask him, he just gave him extra medicine. We then, after we can control, if we know what's the reason of such behavior. Uh, lack of confidence, a lot of people when they have lack of confidence, it will affect their judgment in reporting ADRS. So I have to look at the behavior way. Okay, in order to enhance the integrity, we have first to do positive reporting behavior pattern. Number two, we have to sit with the physician and tell them, what's the problem? Do you understand what ADR is or you don't understand it? Do you have cases or you don't have cases? As a pharmacist, 
Okay? The other sin, the other thing, and to say, would you in your own country or in the way you practice for so, so many years, do you report any progress or you don't report it? Why? I have to know, I have to take a sample, for example. And then, of course, with a special question. And then I will analyze the behavior pattern of these people. Why they are not reporting? Somebody is afraid of certain things. Maybe he doesn't know about it. Maybe he doesn't have time. And a lot of physicians say, I don't have time to read. Then if you don't have time to read, then there is a, a, a pharmacist will help you in that issue. Unfortunately, event near miss, case study will help. We show them a lot of case studies. And instead of talking, just certain pictures, they will understand the sequence of ADRS. And they for sure, they will come to the pharmacy before you come to them. They will come because they know the sequences of ADRS. Uh, as I said, the training, knowledge is not enough. We have to change the attitude of the person who is dealing with such things. We have to look seriously and to be part of their professional obligation. We have to take care of the physician. It's part of your professional obligation to report AD ADRS. Uh, the other thing, we have to put some reinforcements. At the doctor, so we have to enforcement. If you get us uh, this much ADRS, or near miss is what we call it, then you'll get so much so and so, just to embrace the new behavior. The other thing, we have to make assurance that we'll support you as much as we can. If you make a mistake, we support you as much. But you have, first you have to talk to the pharmacist. And you've done everything, then we are going to support you. But don't prescribe medicine and medicine. You don't talk to the pharmacist, we will not support you. This will enforce that such behavior. We have, as doctors say, that the ADRs, we have also to include the patient. My nephew, he doesn't know what to do. Nobody told him, if he has some time with the pharmacist, it will say if you have, because nobody read the side effect, unfortunately. If you have so-and-so, please report to whom? I don't know to whom. Should I go to the same doctor? Should I go to the other doctor? Or go to, for example, a, a big hospital? I don't know where to go. He have to tell me, he have to put a kind of brochure, tell me if you have so-and-so, go to this. If you have so-and-so, and there is a, it must be a 24 hours call, a telephone call, so we can communicate right whether it's with the pharmacist or with the physician. My advice to the physician actually sit with the pharmacist. Have a cup of coffee with them. <laughs> Reading is not enough. Talking by telephone is not enough. If you go in a friendly way and you sit with them, they will tell you more things about medicine because they are the specialists in that issue. Thank you very much.